to the beloved Gina Reinhardt, patron of the National Mining and Related Industries Day, members of the federal and state legislatures, senior leaders in the mining sector and supporting industries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, that includes everybody. If you're undistinguished, you're probably not here. Gina's a force of nature, you know that. Because we're inveterate sports folk here in Australia, we look around, we want world class performances in the pool or our rowers winning gold. Gina's onto that uh, because she is a wonderful philanthropist of many of our sports. But I'd put it to everybody in the room today, and that's why you're here. I don't expect much argument. Mining falls into the essentials for Australian life, that category. Imagine an Australia without developed mining industry. Because for all Australians, life as we know it would not be as it is if we did not make the most of our natural resources. And many of you will say there's work to be done to make the most of it. But if we weren't where we were with the exploitation and development of our natural resources, what would our standard of living be like? Would we be a G20 nation? Would we be arguably, wherever we are at the moment, about the 13th best economy in the world? The answer is no. The minor, mining industry won't win test matches or Olympic gold, but this industry and its people are, every bit, dare I say it, as important, more important actually, for our nation. The facts speak for themselves. Single biggest exporter, accounting for 40% of our national exports. Over one million Australians have jobs either directly or indirectly because of mining. And in the last decade, mining has contributed close to 200 billion in taxes and royalties. On top of all this, mining drives innovation and the application of new technologies, and those benefits flow, uh, flow through to all sectors of the economy. From my old game, so much of the science that uplifts our lives was derived, very ironically, through military research, military conflict. And that's not a reason to have research, military research and conflict. It's just an outcome. How much of that may we now trace to the mining sector on a global basis to produce technologies and additions to our quality of life that we can applaud, take for granted, and probably never know about. Well, not today we don't take it for granted. This is a day to recognise and celebrate just how important mining is to all Australians. It's a day to be proud of what mining does, what it's achieved, and its potential. This is not about sitting on our hands and admiring where we've got to in the mirror. It's the potential. A day to remind ourselves that without mining, we would not have the lives that we do. But even more, I think we should today acknowledge that mining is not only about economic prosperity, it also speaks to who we are as a nation and as a, and as a people. Because mining is inherently a most difficult enterprise. It requires spirit and vision. It's about taking risks and backing yourself. Miners know what it is to take a punt fellows here not necessarily familiar with our vernacular, it means to take a big chance. From the gold rush to the 58 new projects announced in the last year alone, mining is something we do because we embrace the challenge. It's in our DNA. We're to work hard to succeed and to make Australia all that it can be. At its very core, mining is nation building and affirming. We're seeing it expressed in the community, uh, of people who are involved and in the very people themselves. It's in the remote parts of this nation. Uh, it brings that part of the land to life and people in those areas thrive, live and breathe on the jobs and the investment and the infrastructure that every project brings. So to all of you, first of all, particularly those who are here for the first time, welcome to Government House. You, collectively, are the force behind an industry 
that delivers so much for so many. This is something to be proud of. It's something that contributes to this nation, this land that we all love. It's the wide brown land. It was never intended to be just a picture on the wall. It was intended to be a place for people to live and work and to derive their future from its bounty. National Mining and Related Industries Day, well, here for, is the day to pose a simple question. Where would our nation be without the mining industry? Without the mining industry, who would be paying the billions and billions and more in taxes to support our defence forces that we need, police, emergency services, public infrastructure, our elderly, public hospitals, state kindergartens and more? We are an industry that is critical to and at the forefront of underpinning Australia's prosperity and our very living standards. Without mining, you wouldn't have electricity or the 35 different minerals available that make up your mobile phone. Imagine that. A world without electricity or phones, iPads or computers. Our industry has also built large parts of Australia. We have brought investment, opportunities, infrastructure, city conveniences and jobs into some of the most remote, rugged and poor places in our country. Our industry is vital to today's civilization and makes an enormous contribution to our country. This is our day to speak up for our industry and to celebrate it and all of those Australians who work in it. Tonight, I'm delighted to announce that Mr. Tony Galligan is this year's winner of the National Mining and Related Industries Day Award. Would you like to join me? Yeah. During his time as Director of Development with the New South Wales Government, Mr. Galligan was a voice of reason and strongly supported coal exploration, development and export from the Port of Newcastle. He understood that coal is important to jobs, opportunities, revenues, and that thermal coal is essential for our regular power supplies, which homes, hospitals, offices, and industries all need. Tony was instrumental in the upgrading of the rail networks from mine to port and construction of the new Newcastle Coal Terminal. May I present you with the award? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you. Your Excellencies, the Governor General and Lady Cosgrove, Mrs. Reinhardt, distinguished guests and distinguished people of the mining industry. This has been a great uh, privilege to be presented with this award tonight. I've spent nearly 50 years in the coal industry and I don't regret any of that time at all. And all I've got to say tonight is that I just hope that science and sensible debate keeps the mining industry alive in Australia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. My story starts in a simple way. I was out for a walk in the bush one day when I picked up an old red rock in the riverbed. It was heavy and covered with mud and dust. It felt like iron and it looked like rust, so I took it home just to see what the experts said. It seems I stumbled on a treasure all right, a high-grade deposit of hematite, and I decided I would try to open a nine ore mine. The government said you can go to work, but there's just a few papers that we'll need first, and they sent me home with an application to sign. I got the mining permit blues from my head down to my shoes, filling out forms with a name on the bottom line. I'm beginning to feel real low, got a hundred more pages to go, and another day.
day gone before I can open up mine. You have to get a permit if you want to begin, so I signed an application and I turned it in, and I thought I was finished, but that's just the start of my tale. I was ready to work, I was ready to dig, it all seemed easy and my dreams were big when the postman came with a box in the Monday mail. I opened it up and looked inside and there I found, to my surprise, lots of new forms for approval before I could start. Seems that in order to fulfill my dream, I'd have to hire a professional team to submit applications in multiple counterparts. I got the mining permit blues from my head down to my shoes, filling out forms with a name on the bottom line. I'm beginning to feel real low. I got a hundred more pages to go, and another day gone before I can open up mine.